So here we are in quarantine, and uh, after my mom has been yelling at me for a whole two years about cutting my hair, I trust my partner Rose enough to have a go at it. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Ooh. All right, hello. Welcome to my show. This is Cal TV, and I am your host, Kayland. I am going as hard hard as I can to try not to say any ums or uhs. I've been saying a lot of them, particularly when the camera goes, so if I stumble, if my tongue gets thick, it's probably because I'm trying to avoid one of those filler words. So, here we go! Welcome to my show, Punchy Chewy! Alright, here's the final look. Sexy, uh... sexy! <laughs> I have to admit, while she was cutting my hair, I was a little upset because uh, I was like, we're only going to do about an inch and a half off my hair. And then she almost chopped all of it off. <laughs> uh, it actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments below uh, if Rose did a good job with, with haircutting. This is the first time she's cut uh, long, men's, long hair. men's hair. Let me know if she missed her calling and should be a hairdresser. What's up guys? How you doing in YouTube land? <laughs> Isn't it funny how just everybody starts with that on their YouTube channel? Like it's like the universal YouTube intro. I just find it hilarious. Anyways, yeah, hey, hello. Welcome to my site. Welcome back. Uh, we got a great show for you uh, today on this episode. Um, we're going to do a little bit of an astro hour. We're going to do a little bit of a skit for you. Uh, and yeah, we just got a lot of fun stuff on this uh, episode. It's my first episode! I'm so excited to be here with you and to be doing this. And there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. So let's just get right into it. Um, my One of my biggest pet peeves of, of 2020 was uh, the actors and dancers and singers and, and performers uh, saying that they were just sitting around missing the arts and that they felt like a piece of them was missing because they just weren't able to perform. And I get it and I totally understand. Uh, the, but the reason why it was my pet peeve is because we are all artists. That's the point. That's the truth. And the thing about an artist is that you create. You create art wherever you go. That is, that is what you do. You create the jobs, you create the, the art, you create the opportunities, you create the messages, you pour your love into the world, you pour your heart into the world, you don't wait for somebody else to make it and then try to be a part of it, you do it. If you want to sing, sing. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to act, act. And so that was kind of one of my inspirations for doing this. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, sit back, enjoy the ride. If I can make you laugh, smile, or... You know, think about something you never thought of before, then awesome sauce. So here we go. So today we're going to start off with a little question session. I received three questions, uh, one being from my partner, uh, my girlfriend Rose, and the other one being from my mother, and uh, the other one being from um, one of uh, a, another YouTuber who follows me. So these are the three questions that I'm going to answer today. If you have any questions for me, feel free to submit them and I will answer them on my show. So yeah, so um, I took my glasses off because I got the blue light filters. <laughs> and so when I have the blue light, the UV filters on my glasses, sometimes it reflects a lot of light back. So here we go. We have from my mother. Uh, what was your most challenging role from all of your theater performances and why? All right, so that is a great question. Um, one of the most challenging roles for me in terms of theater uh, is, is interesting. I've played a lot of uh, fun roles, um, particularly that were challenging would uh, be Beast from Beauty and the Beast because of my size and the things that I had to do with my physical body and to be able to maintain that physical um, those physical limitations for eight shows a week uh, for about four months. Uh, it did end up putting my knees out of whack. It put my spine out of whack. It put my voice out of whack. 
but so that would be probably the first uh, role that I, that would come to mind in terms of being difficult. But I think most challenging role would definitely be when I played Beethoven in Dog Sees God. And the reason being is because at that time in my life, I wasn't as open to a lot of things. And if you know the show, if you know Beethoven, the character, he is a closeted homosexual who is constantly abused and uh, he's very depressed, slightly suicidal. And uh, all of these deep, heavy topics are just not in my natural um, demeanor, I guess I would say. Like, I don't know, I, I would always tell people that my overall feeling is melancholy, but that's not true. Uh, but anyways, that just doing that show and just diving into the role of Beethoven and to put myself in the shoes of somebody um, who it just doesn't it doesn't matter what they do. They're just always an outsider. They're always left on the outside and there is no relief anywhere they go. The home isn't safe. School isn't safe. They have no friends. And just to be in complete isolation and being and dealing with all this darkness, it just doesn't sit well with a person. And it's horrible on what it can do to your mind and, and your heart and your spirit. And and uh, with me not being open to a lot of those heavy topics back then, and for me to not necessarily be 100% comfortable playing a homosexual, um, since I'm a heterosexual male, uh, CIS male, um, it was, I had to step out of my comfort zone. It was a lot of growth. It was a lot of trust. I had to learn about, you know, this is acting, but also intimate, but also I trust my, my coworker, my actor who's doing this with me. And, uh, it's just a respect thing. And, um, yeah, that just to get to that point in that role was where it was, um, comfortable, to play that role. That was probably my most challenging role. Uh, if you'd like to uh, hear more about that, uh, yeah, definitely, we, we, maybe we can talk about that sometime. Uh, second question comes from a uh, YouTuber, don't at my nuts 14. Uh, it is, uh, what was the strangest thing you ate during COVID? What a very specific question. Um, with, this was like towards the beginning when like there was like nothing in the stores and I realized that it was, we kind of, me and my partner shopped late and didn't have a lot of groceries towards uh, the end of one of the weeks. And I remember uh, searching for some type of meal to get us through. I ended up eating uh, a type of sandwich. Um, it was uh, the, the bread of the sandwich were uh, potato cakes. <laughs> they were potato cakes, fried potatoes. And... Um, and then I had hot dogs lined up, uh, three hot dogs lined up on the potato cake. And then I had uh, leftover purple cabbage from something. And yeah, it was, uh, that was the weirdest thing I ate in COVID. It sounds strange, but you know, a little hot dog sandwich in between potatoes and, and purple cabbage. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be, but it was not, it's not something I'll ever eat ever again. <laughs> How do you tap into your creativity? And how do you follow through on your favorite ideas? So that's a great question. So uh, for any of you who have been following my astrology videos, uh, I am a Leo and the Leo sun needs to create. And I do think that the, the urge to create is in with all humans. Um, whatever that means to you is different for each person, but creation is such a powerful urge that we all have. We need to create, we need to put something into this world. And so I think in order to tap into my creative ideas, um, I've always just been naturally imaginative. I've always been naturally creative. If, if an idea just flows to me from something, it's going to come from somewhere, right? Like, because inspiration comes from doing. So while you're doing things is when all these ideas are going to start coming to you. And the second you get these ideas, like, Sometimes I get random lyrics that pop into my head that don't exist or a melody. I will sing that melody into my phone or I'll write down the lyrics or I'll feel called to write a poem and I'll write a poem uh, or I'll have an idea for a story. And how I, how I tap into that is I try to 
get as much of that idea, as little uh, as the idea is, out of my head and onto paper. So if, if, if I'm being honest, what I probably could do and should do and what would be probably good for me is to have like a little journal, like an idea journal. And uh, anytime I get uh, this spark of creativity, I need to put it in that journal and store it uh, somewhere and then, um, or just <laughs> to just do it. Uh, I, when I get a spark to do a video, I know that I need to just do the video. So, um, how do, yeah, tapping into your creativity, I think comes from doing, um, because perfectionism gets in the way of a lot of things. Procrastination gets in the way of a lot of things, but if you just make yourself do it when you get the idea or just to at least write it down and think of how you could use it and then just try a couple of different things. I think you'll be very surprised on how much creativity flow, how much creative flow will just come out of you. Um, I will say with creativity, you should not tell somebody what your plan is unless it's about 80% of the way done. And the reason being is because if you have an idea, you don't know how they're gonna take it. And most of the time, these people that you're sharing these ideas with will try to shut down your idea or they will try to uh, throw on your idea their vision of your plan and your goal and your idea. And then it no longer becomes your creativity and your idea. It starts, they try to morph it into theirs instead. And ever, <laughs> uh, anyway, so yes. Uh, thank you. That was my question session. Uh, that was fun. Let me know if you have any questions you'd like me to answer and I will answer them to the best of my ability. But for now, let's take it into our astro hour. So we have an astrologer out on the field right now. And so Kalen, they're all yours, buddy. Take it away. Hey, thanks, Kalen. Yes, welcome to astro hour. I'm your astrologer, Kalen. And what, will we, what we will be talking about today is uh, the different types of astrology. If you look up anything into Google on astrology, it'll default to Western tropical astrology. And the reason why this is a problem is because Western tropical astrology that goes off of the seasons and the alignments of the seasons, it's often outdated and it doesn't work anymore. And that's why you have some people that when you tell them what their sun sign is, they either think it's complete hoax and they don't believe it at all because they don't resonate with it, or they do resonate with it completely and they dive right in. Or you might be somewhere around the middle spectrum, which is I don't really know anything about astrology, so I don't have an opinion about it one way or the other. I probably have friends that are obsessed about it. I have friends that are skeptical about it. If they're skeptical, skeptical about it, they're probably a Taurus. If they don't care about it, they're probably an Aries. But anyways, that's just uh, some little two cents right there. But anyways, yes, if you look up anything in astrology, it'll default to tropical. Why is that? Because that is the default universal knowledge on astrology. And this is not great for astrologers because it's not accurate, okay? The Earth shifts on its axis by one day every 71 years. And tropical astrology that aligned astrology with the seasons, that happened thousands of years ago. And so if you are actually shifting with the actual stars and with the actual planets, you'll see that we are completely out of alignment from that tropical standpoint. So how can you go into astrology with knowing what is real, what is true, what is true to you, what your actual chart is? You need to look into true sidereal astrology. True sidereal astrology goes off of the current alignments of the stars, the planets, and the correct sizing. It is what Athen Chimenti, an astrologer, go, uh, refers to as the visible sky that goes against mainstream astrology. So if you want to know what your purpose is, if you want to know what gets in your way, what you're good at, what your struggles are, what your challenges are, how you are in relationships, how you are when you're by yourself, and all these things, look into true sidereal astrology. I'm a true sidereal astrologer. You can always contact me through my website, which should be listed down below in the comment section. True sidereal astrology. And if you don't believe me, just go to any type of live sky app 
website, book, and it'll tell you exactly where the planets are and then listen to a tropical astrologer and you'll know that it, that information that they're giving is contradictory. For example, they say that Saturn and Jupiter have entered Aquarius on December 21st and this marks the age of Aquarius and so a lot of tropical astrologers are advertising the age of Aquarius, the age of hope and all of this stuff and because we went through a really tough year with COVID, of course, we're going to want to believe in something like that afterwards. We feel like we've paid our dues, but it's not over yet. And Saturn, if you look at the live sky, you see that Saturn and Jupiter are actually in Capricorn. It's a whole season. It's a whole constellation behind what tropical astrologers are saying. If you want real information, true sidereal astrology is the way to go. So anyways, I made a whole... Uh, video talking about the difference between tropical versus true sidereal in my own chart. If that's something that's interested that you're interested in, feel free to check that out. It's a part of my site. It is tropical versus sidereal using my chart as an example. And uh, yeah, anyways, if you have any requests on videos that you would like in true uh, sidereal astrology, give me a re give me a shout out and I will make that video. I already had one request uh, from my YouTube channel on a few in a Fucus episode. If you don't know what a Fucus is, boy, that you you've entered into a whole new realm. So, anyways, that is Astro Hour today. Back to you, Kaylin. All right, yes, welcome back. Thanks, thanks for returning. I hope you enjoyed that Astro Hour. Our man Kaylin definitely knows what he's talking about. So, if, if astrology is something you love, keep on coming back. Uh, anyways. For our next segment of this today's show, we are going to be going at, and checking out this skit. Um, <laughs> so this is this is something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, I had this vision in my head about this specific skit on exactly what I wanted to do, where I wanted to do it, who I wanted it, who I wanted to be in it. And due to COVID restrictions, uh, it's very hard uh, for artists to be doing these things themselves. But that therein lies the challenge, right? So I did the best of my ability to um, make this skit, and I did it a little out of order than I usually do. I tried to film it, and then I tried to voice uh, after, and that is probably the worst decision I ever made. And it's it's my, the skit is so bad. Like when, the fact that I completed it though for today specifically is something that I'm proud of. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Maybe it'll make you laugh. Maybe it'll make you cringe. Uh, but definitely feel free to laugh with me on this next skit. This is the Superman addict starring myself, partly film, filmed by my partner Rose, part, part, mostly filmed by myself, mostly recorded by myself. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, hopefully in the future we can redo this skit with more people, more tech, and it'll be way better. So check this out. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, buddy. Oh my god! What are you doing in here? We need to have a talk. <laughs> Could you have at least waited until I got out of the shower? It's about your Superman addiction. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll be outside. Well, could you at least hand me my robe? A cape? Seriously? Come on in. Sit down. <sighs> okay, so what's this about? Kaylind, we need to talk about your Superman addiction. I don't have a Superman addiction. This is nothing that you should take personally, even though it is personal in a way. But it's... We're worried about you. You come in day in and day out, and you are constantly surrounded by all this Superman stuff. We don't know who you are anymore. Look, okay, some people just like Harry Potter, and some people just like Disney. It's just, it's just a thing. Everyone has their thing, right? Like, I just like Superman. It doesn't mean I'm obsessed about it. Are you kidding? What? I'm hungry. A Superman cereal box. I'm not allowed to enjoy my morning cereal? Don't. Don't you read that comic book while I'm talking to you. Kaland. Listen. You don't need to get defensive, okay? Because we love you. It's gotten quite a bit out of control. You snuggle Henry Cavill every night. Not, not, not every night. I don't snuggle up to Henry Cavill every night. It's just a pillow. Yeah, it's not my fault that people just give me Superman stuff as gifts. I don't have a Superman problem. Oh, you don't think you have a problem? You don't think you have a problem. So I have a lot of Superman stuff. That doesn't mean that I'm, I'm obsessed with Superman. See, right there. That is what I'm talking about. Look at that mug. Oh, this is just a mug. That's purely coincidental. Seriously. A Superman water bottle? Don't you already have like five of those? You don't think you have a Superman problem. Put down the blanket. My grandma made it for me. What's your point? You have way too many Superman shirts. Kayland, pay attention. Do you remember that week when you wore a Superman shirt every single day?
Wow, you're right. I I have a lot of Superman stuff. I have a lot of Superman stuff. I mean, I didn't even realize I had so much stuff. What am I going to do with all this stuff? We just want the real you back. And awareness is the first step. And now that you're aware, you can do something about it. And we'll be here for you. <gasps> I should make a Superman movie. No. No, 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 Kaylin, that's not what I'm saying. You need some serious help. <laughs> Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that video. <laughs> if, uh, if you didn't laugh at it, uh, I apologize. Uh, and also, you have no soul. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, yes, uh, I love Superman. Uh, I love acting. And I love making making fun of that. So hopefully, yeah, one day I can redo that skit. Uh, yes, I am creating my own Superman fan film. I wrote my own script about four years ago. Uh, yeah, and it's just something that I've always been passionate about. I love Superman. He's the best superhero of all time. Uh, changed my mind. Uh, good luck, you won't. <laughs> But anyways, yes, I'm doing a Superman fan film. I will be starring as Superman in the film. It is my dream to be Superman. And uh, whether that's metaphorically through film, through the world, you know, it sounds arrogant, but I just love the character and I just love what he stands for. And uh, yes, I am all about the Superman. So, and uh, I have a long version that, that is like the perfect fan film in my head. Uh, however, again, sharing my ideas with people, that has been whittled down as much as possible to getting this this short, doable movie for what I have right now in terms of resources. So we'll be doing that short version, and then hopefully uh, later on I can do my version of that movie, which was like a two and a half hour uh, action-packed story on the last, uh, the last Son's Exile uh, comic book. So anyways, yes, that is something I'm really excited about. <laughs> okay, so for, for this show, um, I wanted to talk about uh, COVID because um, I didn't believe it at first. And by that, I mean, I didn't believe that I was going to get it. So I was initially going out without my mask because all these articles were coming out saying, that when you are isolated and quarantined away from the world, your immune system goes down because you're not naturally exposed to things. So in order to keep up your immune system, it's like they, it's like the, the, the farmer said in the olden days, like you don't wash your vegetables, you just eat it. You know, a little dirt, a little dirt ain't never hurt nobody. But um, so that's kind of like my mentality with COVID was that unless someone coughs or sneezes directly on my face, I'm not going to get it because I'm very cleanly overall anyway. And I wash my hands like nobody's business already. So but here's the thing. COVID is now the number third leading cause of death in America. That is crazy. That is insane. And uh, it's it's unbelievable that we are still um, thinking that it's not real or that it's just magically going to go away with a. Uh, a vaccine that's going to uh, save you for a few hours for a particular strain. There are new strains that are coming out. So whether this vi uh, vaccine works or not, I'm not sure. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not big into uh, conspiracy theories, but I am skeptical about a uh, 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 vaccine because COVID is a synthetic virus and a synthetic virus with a synthetic vaccine um, it just doesn't sit well with me. And especially what's going along planetarily with the planets and Saturn being in Capricorn, I don't trust the powers of authority right now to look out for our best interests. 
Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that in, in another Astro Hour. But I mean, just looking at the updated policy on Instagram alone, you can kind of see that there's a lot of Big Brother stuff going on that's way worse than the social dilemma has uh, shown us. But anyways, yes. So COVID, uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because I recently went to Disney World. I know, I know. Um, it was my, my parents bought tickets to go to Disney World uh, towards the beginning of the pandemic for November. They thought that by this time around this year that it wouldn't be a big deal and that we would have figured it out by now. Uh, and boy, did America prove for them wrong. But anyways, uh, I did end up going. I was very uh, nervous and scared to go as one should be uh, while traveling during a pandemic. It is not safe. Um, but I will say that uh, kudos to Disney and Universal because I did feel safer than I would have ever expected. Um, I do have a video that I will be posting uh, about my trip to Disney World uh, during a pandemic. So if that is something that you're interested in, feel free to check out that video. Uh, I talk, I'm talk. i specifically most, mostly going to talk about my love for Star Wars and Harry Potter, what I got from Star Wars, uh, unpacking the lightsabers and all that stuff, unpacking the uh, all the stuff that I got at Harry Potter, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And yeah, so that is what that's gonna be about, so. I've prepared a skit for you so that you can see some of the things that I saw while traveling with the mask. I, yeah, just watching the way that people act and the way that people treat and use these masks. Uh, it's no reason why this pandemic is still ongoing and is still a big issue in America. And um, for all of these anti-maskers that say that it doesn't work or that it takes their, their social liberties away, it's just, it's just a bunch of nonsense. And uh, I'll be curious to see what you think after seeing this skit. So go ahead and check it out. So yes, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, it is definitely interesting when you see how people uh, respond with the, the masks. And uh, you know, even going for, for my, speaking for myself when I initially didn't want to wear a mask, you just realize that just wearing a mask isn't about you, it's for everyone else. And it isn't a form of oppression and, an, and the greater, what is good for the greater good it's not a stem of communism. It, it, this, it's just common courtesy. It just limits the risk. So, yeah, yeah. Just don't be that. Don't be that person that is just like, oh, you're breathing your own carbon dioxide. Like, that's not how it works. Um, also, the whole like, I can't breathe either. It's it's a God-given right to breathe and blah 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 blah. It's it's just people grasping at straws because they feel like they have no they have no control over what's going on right now. So they're holding onto something tangible that they can put all their anger and fear towards and it just happens to be masks. So yeah, just don't be that person. Just realize we're all in the same boat. We're all in this together. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about COVID. I'll talk more about that in my um, Orlando <laughs> video. And yeah, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see on this show. I'm always open to ideas. And I just wanted to say thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, I do respond to all of my comments, unless you're a troll. So feel free to reach out to me for any reason at all. 
And uh, yeah, love to be in community with you. I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you. You're the best. You deserve the world. And I'm glad you're here. Take care. Excuse me. Yeah. Is this beginner's tap? Yeah, it is. We're about to get started, so throw your shoes on. Great. Welcome to Beginner's Tap. Today we're going to be learning one of the fundamentals, the shuffle. Ready and shuffle. Shuffle. Again. Shuffle. Again. Shuffle. Nicely done, everyone. Well done. Uh, I've already taken a couple of tap classes. Um, do you have anything that's a little more intermediate? Yeah, so what you'll want to do is come back at five o'clock, okay? Yeah. Intermediates, hey, so let's just pick up from where we left off last week, okay?